All right, in my previous video, we created this example of a distribution of a lot of different possible samples we could collect. And my question was, do you plan on watching a movie at a theater sometime in the next 10 days? We said my sample size was 10, and this would be the shape of the distribution of all those samples. Where we said we know ahead of time uh, we're omnipresent and we know that it is actually 60%, and so we know it would be shaped like this with 6 out of 10 or 60% occurring the most often. Okay, now let's go on. What I would like to do now is say, all right, let's say we actually go out and, and get one sample of 10 people. We question them, and let's say it turns out that exactly 5 out of those 10 say, yes, we're going to go see a movie sometime in the next 10 days. So that sample's proportion would be 5 out of the 10, or 50%. Now, based on that, statisticians want to come up with a statement about the entire population. What kind of statement can we make? Well, let's start with this statement here and go from there. Here's my statement. And this is, this is in general, the type of statement a statistician makes based on a sample. And this says, we're pretty sure that the actual proportion for all adults is kind of close to 50%. Now, I don't know about you, but a couple of those phrases uh, catch my eye and sound kind of wishy-washy. This phrase of pretty sure, we're pretty sure, and the, the real actual proportion is kind of close to 50%. In statistics, even though this is a, the general type of statement we want to make, we want to, we want to nail down exactly what we mean, not just pretty sure, and we want to nail down how close we are to 50%, not just kind of close. Okay? Okay. So, well, what do we know? We know that if I wanted to be 100% sure, if I wanted to be 100% sure of my answer, how close would I have to be to 50%? Well, 100% sure means that we, we can't possibly be wrong. So how close do I have to be to 50% to be 100% sure? Well, I have to include every possible outcome of a sample. So if I'm at 50%, I have to say how close? Well, I've got to be within 50% on either side of 50%. In other words, we're saying... We're 100% sure that the actual proportion of all adults is between 0% and 100%. Well, that statement is worthless. Everything's between 0% and 100%, but that's the only statement we can make if we want to be 100% sure. All right, so, so <laughs> what is reasonable? Well, let's just go to the other extreme. Let's say... We only want to be 50% sure. To be 50% sure that I'm right means that I'm wrong 50% of the time. What good is any kind of statement that says I, I'm probably wrong 50% of the time? So at that extreme, I certainly don't want to go down to 50%. So, you know, how, what can we do about this pretty sure statement? 100% is a silly statement to make. 50% is silly. What do we normally use? Well, let me tell you. Normally... We make a statement about being 90% sure or 95% sure, sometimes 98% sure, or sometimes 99% sure of our answer. And what do we mean by these, these percents? By the way, these, these have names. I might as well give you the names. All these things have names, so I'll introduce them. These are called confidence levels. Confidence levels. And these are the typical confidence levels that are used in statistics. Any, any confidence less than 90% is considered, you know, not strong enough confidence to even make a statement. And we know it's ridiculous to make a statement about 100% because you've got to include everything. Well, if you're making a statement about 99%, you say, well, gee, don't we have to include about everything there too? Yeah, but you'll be, you'll be surprised though. 
All right. Well, we've already discussed early in the, in the quarter exactly what we know about 95%. In order, in order to be within 90, within all of these values of 95% of all the values around 5, 50%, then we already know that the, the range rule says that, well, to, to, to get 95% of all values, you start in the middle and go out to standard deviations. One above, one below. Remember that? The range rule. Well, the range rule is just kind of a general idea, and it's time that we were a little more specific. It turns out that to get 95%, you really don't go out to standard deviations. The precise number that you have to go out, number of standard deviations you have to go out in either direction is actually 1.96 standard deviations. You say, big deal, what's the difference between that and two? Well, we want to be precise, and we can be precise, and the, and the number is 1.96, not two, okay? The, 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 the uh, range rule is just a nice general statement, and two is an easy number to remember. But now we know that it's actually 1.96. <clears throat> if, if we only care to be 95% accurate, that is, we only are going to include 90% 90, 90 of all possible values around 5, then we only have to go out 1.64 standard deviations, not as far. If we want to be right 98% of the time, or another way of saying it is, if we want to include 98% of all possible outcomes from these samples, then we need to go out 2.33 standard deviations. If we want to be 99% sure of our answer, that means we have to include 99% of all the possible outcomes. And to do that, we would have to go out in either direction of 5. We would have to go out 2.575 standard deviations because it, that number is exactly smack dab between 0.57 and 0.58. This 5 here, we, we go ahead and include that. We have this up to three decimal places. These are the four very common confidence levels that are used, and these are the corresponding numbers that tell me how many standard deviations I have to go out to include this percent of all possible outcomes, so that I therefore can be this confident in my answer. Okay, let's go back to this 95 percent. If I'm going to go out 1.96 standard deviations in either direction of 50 percent, Well, what's a standard deviation? What is the standard deviation for this distribution? We know every distribution has a different mean and a different standard deviation. Well, here's how we calculate it. First of all, if we're, if we're going to say our sample proportion was 50%, then we, we have a name for that. Whatever, whatever information we use from the sample, in this case the proportion, we call the proportion sample the point estimate, and we give it a name of P with a caret mark over the top of it, and this is red P hat. P hat is simply just the proportion that we get from the sample. That's all. Okay? And it is the probability, in this case, of success. We've got a 50% chance of success. We're saying 5 out of 10 said, yep, they're going to go to see a movie. Now, in my next video, I will show you exactly the formula for standard deviation and show how we use that to build our interval on how far we're going to go on either side of 50%.